Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the Master Race. Today we're going to learn to overclock. As you can see, I've been hard at work. Right now I'm clocked at about 400 million gigahertz. And Crisis 3 runs about one frame per second faster. But on the downside, my room's on fire. So. Yeah. Please send help. In all seriousness, though, we're going to learn to overclock. First thing I'm going to say is that I was kind of being serious in a way when I said that I got a whole t one frame per second in crisis. Really, overclocking your CPU is not going to give you a whole lot of benefit in games. It really depends. If you like playing a lot of RTSs or maybe city simulations, things like that, a little bit more CPU intensive, then overclocking is going to give you a grand old time. You might actually get a significant gain in performance. But if you're just playing normal first-person shooters or character action games, you might find that you're going to get through all this process and really you've gained not a whole lot of benefit. You may end up seeing by the time you're done with this virtually no difference, even if you clock maybe a whole half a gigahertz more. But regardless of that, let's learn too anyway. Maybe we'll get something good out of it. So you're going to head over to your BIOS, and if you're watching this in 2006, it probably looks like something like this. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't look like this. If, if it looks like this, you got the wrong video. You're going to see something that looks a little bit more like this, or maybe this. Now, what the hell is this? This is your BIOS. It's just a little thing for your motherboard. It's just a bunch of menus. You can mess with settings, tell it to do stuff, <coughs> and that's exactly what we're going to do today. Now, how do I get here? All you got to do is turn off your computer. That's right. To do this, you turn off your computer. Then you're going to turn it back on. When you turn it back on, it's going to give you a little prompt that says like, hey, press the delete key or press the F key or do something like that to get to the BIOS, and you're going to do exactly that. Press the key it tells you to go there. Now, users with SSDs, you might have a little bit of a problem because when you start up your computer, it starts up too fast, and you find yourself already at Windows by the time you're able to think, hey, what the hell is that thing it told me to press? <clears throat> That's okay. Just Google it. You should know what motherboard manufacturer you have, and I'm confident that you're smart. You're in the PC Master Race. Of course, you're smart. Go ahead. Find out what you're supposed to be doing. There's some button you're supposed to press, and then once you start up a computer, just mash that fucker. Okay, I'm in the BIOS. What do I do now? You're going to find something somewhere called the CPU ratio. It's probably going to say auto, or maybe it's just already set in a number, and so you're going to go ahead and take that number and bump it up one degree. If it says 20.0 and the next level is 20.5, that's all you got to do. Bump it up to 20.5. If it says like 40 point something, bump it up to 40.5. All you're going to do is take the ratio, bump it up a little. Just tap it up. Just tippity tip, tap it up. And that's it. That's all you got to do. Congrats. You're done overclocking. Yay! Quit! I'm done! That's all I got to do. But not quite because there's some problems that can happen if you try to just go ham on it and overclock to 50,000 right away. It's not going to work. Why isn't it going to work? Well, two things. Temperatures and the fact that your CPU just can't handle it. How do we take care of temperatures? Well, first you should have a decent cooler. Right here we're looking at the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. This is miles better than the stock cooler. Only costs like 30 to 40 bucks. It's a great value. Get this thing if you just have the stock cooler. Please get it. Do not waste time. Do not keep dealing with the loud noises every time you want a game. Just go get one of these fucking things. It's really not that hard. You're going to save yourself a lot of headache and your eardrums blowing out in the end. But maybe you want water cooling. If you're going to spend more than f about 50 bucks on this endeavor, because honestly the Hyper 212 is not going to get you very far in overclocking, if anywhere. It'll just keep your temperatures a little bit more under control. Now, water cooling, if you spend more than 50 bucks, it's a great way to go. It's going to keep you very, very cool. It may be slightly louder. It may be uh, slightly quieter, depending on what kind of load you're under. For overclocking, this is really going to be the best option. Now, if you're more serious about this, you probably know that you could go get something like the NZXT Kraken, or you could go ahead and get something like one of the Corsair options. There's very, there's much bigger radiators you could get. There's much better all-in-one systems you could get for 100, 120 bucks. But on a basic low level, if you just want a small overclock, just get one of these things. It works great. It's fine. Now, last thing, 
is we're going to want to set our CPU on fire. How to do that? You're going to head over to a website called Softpedia, but if you want to, you can just Google Intel burn test. You're going to ignore all the fucking ads that are all over the place. Many of them say download for some reason. Don't click them. They're not downloads. This is a download. Look at it. I'm telling you right now. Don't get a virus. This is the download. You're going to click that. Use anything you like. Depends on what country you're in. I'm in the U.S., so we're going to do that. Zip file is going to pop up. Go ahead and open it. Now, if you're not lazy, you can go ahead and extract this like a normal person. Or if you are lazy, you can just go ahead and try to run the program. It's going to say, hey, I have to extract that dipshit. Go ahead and extract it. And then run the program. And here it is. This is Intel Burn Test. Now, despite the name, this actually works with both AMD and Intel. Uh, anything from Athlons to the 8300 series, from i3s to i5 to i7s, it works for everything. It's great. No matter how many threads or how many cores or whatever you've got, how much RAM, you're good. So the default of running 10 times on a standard stress level is probably an okay place to start. If you're a little bit more serious about this, you might want to take your stress level and do a custom and make the RAM as much as you possibly can. Just make sure that everything's okay. Times to run, 10 is safe, but you may want to go for more, 20, 30. It'll take a while, but you'll be guaranteed the longer that you run this thing that your CPU is actually stable at the clock you have it at. <clears throat> now, some of you are probably sitting there going, why isn't he using Prime 95? That's the only real thing for testing core stability. Well, yeah, that's true, but I don't really care about that because I don't run things for eight hours at a time. If you feel like taking Prime 95 and running that overnight and letting your CPU burn to heck for that many hours, I mean, it's not really dangerous. It's fine. It's actually a great way, once you've found your final overclock, to fully test if it's stable. But in the short term, this is going to do a much better job for you. It's even got a picture of fire. Look at that. It's in the name, burn test. It's going to do exactly what we want to do. It's going to get your CPU to heat up as quickly as possible. Now, how hot is it? You're going to want to use a program called SpeedFan to find out about that. Once again, we're smart. We're not going to click on any ads. Download. This is a lie. It'll download something. It's not SpeedFan. It's not SpeedFan. There we go. We got a download. Go and click on it. Say I agree. Let it do its shit. Install. Okay. Close. Where where is it? It's okay. You can find it. Go over here. Hey, look! It made an icon. I like icons. Click it. It's gonna take a little while to do its thing, and it's finding all your fans, finding all your hardware, finding out what's going on. What are the temperatures? What are the speeds? Now, there's a whole lot of bullshit that you can do with this program. You can let it control all kinds of fan speeds, do all sorts of things. You can get really crazy with this if you want to fully customize how fast everything's going. But for our purposes, we just want to find out what our temperatures are. I'm aware that for AMD, about the highest you're going to be able to get safely is somewhere in the 60 degrees Celsius range. And much anywhere beyond that, it's really just going to fry it to death. Uh, with Intel, you can get much, much higher. I don't know what the exact number is, but I've heard that they can get up to like 80 or 90. Don't quote me on that, please. Please, I know right now you're going to the comments. He's wrong! He's wrong! Let your Intel get to 80 degrees, it'll melt! Well, yeah, if it melts, that's your fault, not mine. So, see, we got a temperature here. 48 degrees Celsius. Running just fine. Everything's lovely. Just keep this open. All you want is this local temp. Now, right now, it's telling me that my GPUs are on fire and that something else is especially on fire. If, th if it was actually 127 degrees Celsius, there would be a legitimate house fire going on right now. But that's not the case. SpeedFan sometimes lies about certain temps. It doesn't quite know what's going on. It doesn't detect things correctly. Uh, as you could guess, remote 1 and 2. Uh, I do not have anything that is sub-zero in my room while simultaneously being on fire. All you want is this local temp. Local? Yeah, it's temperature for your CPU. That's all you want. That's it. 
48 degrees Celsius. That's about right. Now, some of you there are probably thinking, like, hey, what the hell is this guy running? I have an 8350 AMD uh, running at 4.2 gigahertz. My overclock is very, very small. As it happens, I lost what is called the silicon lottery, and that's something that you're going to have to deal with, too. Basically, when they're making CPUs, they try to make them all to the best standards. They try to see if they can get every chip to run at 5 gigahertz, but that's just not going to be the case. It won't happen. So they take all their chips that can't quite get to 5 gigahertz. They say, ah, oh, you know, this one maybe gets to like 4.7 gigahertz. Well, we'll just downclock it to 4.0 gigahertz and call it the 8350 and sell it. And that's basically the whole point of what we're doing here today is overclocking allows you to go back, find out what your CPU is really capable of. As it happens, mine's not capable of much. If I go anywhere beyond 4.2, I get crashes. Intel burn test doesn't succeed. I get blue screens. But right here is a pretty happy place. Now, I've also gone into my BIOS and set a custom fan speed, which you too can also adjust in your BIOS or using this nifty little speed fan here. Um, and I've told my CPU fan that it's okay for it to let it get up to uh, 50 degrees Celsius uh, and still run at a relatively low fan speed. And anything higher than that, it'll start ramping up to make sure that things stay nice and cool. So don't panic. If you see this start getting up to the point where it doesn't say a little checky mark and it says fire, that's probably a bad sign. Sometimes it just means that it's just getting hotter and that's okay, and sometimes that means it's too hot. Uh, most CPUs will intelligently downclock themselves and then just eventually crash themselves if it detects that your temperature is getting too hot. But to be safe in an emergency, smother your computer to death, hold down the power button, it's out of love, don't, don't burn yourself. So that's really it. It's really just, there's not much to it. It's a simple process. Take your CPU ratio, bump it up. Take your burn test, burn your CPU. Take your speed fan, make sure your temperatures are okay. You're gonna keep doing this over and over and over again. Eventually you're gonna find that you're gonna reach a point where you crash or blue screen. It's okay, calm down, go back, take it down one notch, make sure that's still stable and you're done. You're probably not going to see much of gain in games like I said at the very beginning of the video. Really, unless you're playing like something where there's hundreds of units on the screen all at the same time and that's a very CPU intensive thing, you're not going to get much benefit from this, but it's a neat little fun activity to do on a like a Sunday afternoon or something like that. So, go ahead and uh try it out. Thanks for watching. Bye.